Good afternoon. This is going to be a very brief video, video, but I just want to point out the fact that heresies are never logical. Many people will look back on people involved in heresy and say, well, how can they believe this? How can they believe that? How can they? Well, the point is, heresies aren't logical. You go to Galatians and you see Paul. What's Paul doing? He's rebuking the Galatians. He says they are in a Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, for whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only I would learn of you, receive ye the, the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the healing of faith. Are ye so foolish, have begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And then he goes to 3.14, that no man is justified, by the law in, in, in the sight of God, it is evident. Evident means it's being, it's how you're fully persuaded. It's evident. It's, it's, it's a fact. It's truth. Heresy is never truth. That's what these people don't understand. Now, what the faith works people, by the way, and we'll deal with that later. I haven't gotten a chance to get back there and deal with it. They take 313, 3.11 and they say, but that no man now is justified by the law in the sight of God. They put the, they try to insinuate that this is for the only present time in the church age. Paul is saying no one was ever justified. No one was ever justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. That live there is eternal life. The faith works, guys. That they always they stick into in, in, uh, implicitly. They try to stick in the now. And, oh, that just means for church age. So yeah, we'll be dealing with that more later. I haven't had a chance to get to them. Doing some treatments involved in that in my like my, my cancer issue. But so I've been off uh, YouTube for a while and I'm planning to get back. Now that kind of the uh, the treatments are over. But the point is, when you see guys get up like the eternal security issue. And they want to argue with you and say, well, how could you not believe in eternal security because you believe Jesus Christ died for all your sins? No one said it was logical. Paul rebukes Peter. He says, how, you're not living as a Jew. Why are you pulling back away from the Jews? It's not logical. It's not rational. Heresies never are. Paul says you're bewitched. Truth is logical. Truth is rational. Truth is consistent. Heresies aren't. So when you look at someone who says, how can they believe that and be saved? He says, well, the point is, is not, people involved in heresies, they don't make any sense. They could, be so, so, they could still be saved because at one time, they trusted and what the Holy Spirit was showing them from the Scriptures. They trusted the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, according to the scriptures, they trusted the scriptures as the word of God. The Holy Spirit was witnessing to them as they were hearing the scriptures, and they believed it. Then Satan comes in right behind it, right behind the scriptures, right behind the truth, and starts saying, no, that's not true, that's not true, don't believe this. Don't believe. And then people who are already saved come back and look at these people involved in heresies, and say, well, that doesn't make any sense, so they can't be saved. Heresies never make any sense. Because they're bewitched. Heresies are the flesh. And so there's always an issue where you have to reject something that's evident in order to be involved in heresy. Something true. Because something that comes up and you say, you like something, you like to say, oh, I want to believe that rather than this. You get deceived into believing something other than this, other than the truth. And that's the book of Lake Galatians is showing us. Paul is saying, logically, he says, he's starting grace, where are you going back under the law? And they were being told that by saved Jews, people. Those are saved Jews, people who believed. They were talking about their walk. Well, that's what the whole issue of uh, Acts 15 was about. Oh yeah, they're saved, the Gentiles are saved, but they got to get circumcised. Now, Paul had, had Timothy circumcised in order to get into the synagogues and the uh, temple so he could give witnessing. But with Titus, he refused to, you know, he said, you're Gentiles, no, no, you're not getting circumcised. 
because circumcision has never had anything to do with anybody's salvation. They had the issue of how can they can approach, get, get to the Jews in the synagogues. But, but the point of this video is to, pull, to look at the reality that you can't look back at a heresy, someone who's involved in heresy, and say, well, he couldn't have been saved then. Because that's the point of the heresy. The heresy isn't, isn't, isn't rational. It's foolishness. It's crazy. Because it doesn't follow the consistent truth of the scriptures. It doesn't follow the, truth, the consistent truth of the attributes of God. And when, when you read these guys, and that's why one of the things I do on YouTube is pointing out their inconsistencies, because they, 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 like the faith works for this in the Old Testament, they're totally inconsistent with the attributes of God. It's irrational, according to Scripture. I'm not talking about human reason, I'm talking about Scripture. Paul always goes back to the issue of being, this isn't irrational, this doesn't make any sense, according to the Scriptures. If you believe this, you must believe that. According to the scriptures, someone took you up the path. Someone deceived you. And if you look at the, the path you're walking, it doesn't follow the same path that you started on. So always keep in mind that looking back at a heresy, someone who's involved in heresy, like for instance, not believing in eternal security. And these people say, well, they, they couldn't, there's no way they could be saved if they don't believe in eternal security. You know, because you, you have to be Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross. You hear? That's very true. But the point is, these heresies aren't, aren't logical. You can't get into the mind and say, "What? How? You, how could you not see Jesus Christ die for all your sins on the cross and now think you could lose your salvation?" It doesn't make any sense. But heresies aren't made to make sense. Because they're part of the flesh. They're emotional. They make people feel better. That's why people cling to heresies. They make people feel better. They're traditions. And so the idea of, of, of looking at these things according to Scripture, Scripture will never be irrational. Scripture will never be illogical. Scripture will always, that's why systematic theology, Scripture will always be consistent. And when you see a heresy, you'll spot an inconsistency. You'll spot something illogical. You'll spot something that doesn't make sense according to other scriptures. And that's why all you have these guys with the faith works and the Lordship of Salvation, faith works in the Old Testament, the faith of the Lordship of Salvation, you know, looking for the signs and wonders, you know, uh, rejecting the intimacy, the pre-tribulation pre pre of rapture. All these things these guys are out there doing when they say one thing and then do something else. You say, you say, you know, that doesn't make any sense. We talk, <laughs> uh, you know, being against interracial, Christian interracial marriage. You say, well, how can I be against that? There's, there's nothing against that. It's irrational. And you say, well, why don't they repent of it? And why are they clinging to it? Because they like it. You keep showing them from the scriptures. That's why it's, you rebuke a hell they kept at the, uh, uh, two, twi two times, the two admonitions. Which just means you're dealing with the heretic, you're not dealing with the heresy. But the point is, is that they've gone, they've gone irrational. And the reality is, when you become one, irrational in one area, you're going to become more irrational in another area. They're going to start falling apart because now you're, off, off the, off, you're inconsistent. Logically, you refuse to see the truth. And God stops showing you things now. At that point, God just shuts you down. says, okay, you're going to keep, you're going to keep, keep working on this until you get this one right. You can't move forward. So, uh, when you look at Paul and Paul's writings dealing with heresies, you just find he's always pointing out, what are you guys doing? <laughs> it's just, this doesn't even make any sense according to what you believed. So, when people get up and argue, so you have to believe in eternal security when you got saved, and say, well, how could you not believe, how, how could you not believe in eternal security when you got saved? Because you wouldn't think about eternal security when you got saved. You wouldn't think about the fact that you were saved. You wouldn't think about losing. Now, eternal security is a logical corollary to the fact that you got saved. But as soon as you get saved, and this is something these guys, people don't, don't understand, Satan comes in. He attacks 
he begins attacking as a spiritual warfare begins as soon as a person gets saved Satan comes in and tries to neutralize an individual's growth with deceptions irrational thinking worldly thinking fleshly thinking puts you right back in the flesh and so you say well how could you think that how could how could Peter be pulling away from the, the Jews you weren't even living as a Jew how could you were saved by the grace I don't know how to go back under the law when no one was ever saved by the law at any time any place it was never meant Paul plays the point the law wasn't meant to save anybody eternal salvation there was a covenant issue dealing with the law that could save people physically I'm going to stop quickly put this up and so we'll go back Hope we get, uh, hope, I tend to get more, back more consistent uh, YouTube videos, deal some more issues, and uh, I appreciate all your prayers and your concerns. I deal with my treatment, uh, and everything's going well. And uh, so, thank you. You know, God has been very good and, and blessed me. And um, uh, I thank you again for all the, uh, the prayers because they've certainly been edifying and efficacious. So keep that in mind, though. When you see people arguing, and I got these guys always arguing me. How can they believe this and be saved? How can they believe this and be saved? How can they believe this and be saved? It's like you know what? It's like thinking about how a criminal thinks. People always say, "How could how could you have done that?" He's a criminal. <laughs> you know, they had their book many years ago inside the criminal mind. You normal people can't think like criminals. They were rational. They do so many stupid things. You say, well, why would they want to do this to live in jails or for the whole life? Or you know, if you're a, you're not a criminal, so you can't figure out. You can only know what they did by what they did, but you can't figure out why they did what they did because it's irrational. Normal people don't think that way. That's the point. Now, when you get in your flesh. You're totally irrational, people. That's one thing you can tell you about yourself when you're in the flesh. That's why you have, you react, you know, you lose your patience. Uh, you're not seeing things where God's seeing things. You become, you know, angry, bitter, vindictive, jealous. You hate, you know, you, you, whatever, you, whatever the, the trends of your own nature are, start manifesting themselves, and they don't make any sense. Sin is always irrational. Sin is emotional. It regards it, it disregards truth. It just just deals with emotion and the immediate desires of what what it wants. It what it wants is self. It's all about self. And at that point, it's immediate. It's not even thinking long range, long term. The benefits is thinking about like a child, you know, like a baby. Just I I want what I want, and I'm going to take it. No matter what what the consequences, and that's why you say, "Well, how could this guy do this?" It's like, you know, <laughs> they don't have it a long term view. It's immediate. Everything's immediate. So you look at heresies, which is one of the sins of the flesh mentioned in Galatians. Then they're not made to make sense, but you need to point them out because you say, "Wait a second, that's what Paul, Paul, Paul used logic. Says, what, what, why would you start in grace and end up in the law?" Because someone came along, these Jews came along and said, oh, oh, that's great, that's great stuff, you got their grace, but let's put you back under the law. Let's get you circumcised. They were bewitched, deceived. So, as a believer, you can't go back and try to understand and argue from a point of logic and say, well, that doesn't make sense, so they couldn't have been saved. I mean, the apostles were walking with the Lord three years. <laughs> In, you know, he rebukes me. So wasn't my opinion, you guys? <laughs> you can't figure this out because they had the mind locked on what they thought the Messiah was going to be—a king and not not the suffering uh, suffering servant. They were rational. So always keep that in mind when when you're arguing with people, discussing people with the issue, and they say, "Well, you know," says, "Well." Person believes they had a, had a certain belief in eternal security. When they believe it. They weren't thinking about eternal security when they believed. They were thinking about the fact that at that moment they were saved, and they had the promise of eternal life, and they were in heaven. They weren't thinking about, well, can I lose this? 
That wasn't that that wasn't part of their thinking. Unless someone brings it up after and says, "Well, now you know you know you can't lose it." But that's after the save. And of course, you say, look, looking at hindsight, you say, "Well, certainly, if they believe that Jesus Christ died for all the sins on the cross, they can't believe that they can lose their salvation." Well, it makes sense to you and me. <laughs> if you believe in security. So we say, well, how can they not believe that? Well, heresies don't have to make sense. For whatever reason, people cling to these things. They, it makes them feel better, the idea that, well, I'm working for my salvation now, even though I was saved by grace before. But now I want to keep my salvation. And, there's the only, and, and what these guys would do, they'll say, well, it's not all sins you you, know, you can lose your salvation. It's certain certain sins you can lose your salvation. Or for instance, like if you, you can't reject, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's like it. That's it. You know, like, you, know all, it, you can't just you know walk away from God. And, and, and so there's always this, there's like a a, le a level of of the walk, and then they they vary. There's going to be certain sins you can you can't mit, commit at all, and still still regard yourself being saved. You know, so they'll have a agree, like, you know, Arminius and versus Wesley, you know, uh, 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 spectrum. But let me stop and put this uh, up and, uh, again, just point out and say, look, when you're dealing with heresy, you're not dealing with rational, rationality. You're not dealing with, uh, the truth is, Scripture is evident. And Satan's goal is to get you off the road, get you fouled up. That's why, you know, I said, we, we point out these guys. Like these PBI guys who were getting people fouled up with the first faith works just in the Old Testament, who will tell you raptures, the raptures are imminent, can happen, which means it can happen at any moment, and then talk about, well, maybe the rapture will happen two, two, uh, a year from now. Or well, it's 2020 a year of rapture, you know. Let's look for those signs in, in the air, you know. So that means they're imminent. <laughs> it's the point. And that's where you got to worry about deception. That's why you have a King James Bible, to check it. And when some teacher tells you, he said, well, you know, I'm not going to, who are you, you know? I went through a theological study thing, I'm, you know, who are you, and you, you're, you're attacking my ministry. They're thin-skinned. Breaker wants to talk about the things that God hates, and he goes to Proverbs 6, and so like, you know, well, go to the Nicolaitans. God hates Nicolaitans. Think a, cl a, 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 a clergy over over the uh, the people. That's what that's what these guys are doing. PBI. They think they're clergy. That's what it comes to. Real King James Bible believers. But it goes for all heresies. They attack the Trinity. What they have to do is attack the Trinity. They have to ignore. One person talking to the other person. <laughs> just ignore it. Say, well, who's talking to? Who's, who's talking to who yet? Just know it. Now, some truths uh, you can't explain how they work, but you can see that they are truth because they do make sense, given the context of being, being put in the truth. So truth is always rational. The scriptures are always rational, according to the rationality of God. I mean, we're not talking about man's rationality, we're talking about God's rationality. They always make sense, given the true context. They all, they're not going to contradict each other. There's going to be no contradiction. There's, there's going to be uh, nothing uh, that... Um, uh, takes you off a wrong path and, and you know and, and violates another truth. That's why truth is built upon truth. It's hierarchical and contextual. You're always checking, making sure something Satan has snuck in some leaven somewhere to corrupt it. And that's why when teachers are teaching something false, you got to point that out. Say, wait a minute, that's not true. A works faith system in the Old Testament, and then they reject the idea of the works that were involved there were to show their self, their, their faith, and it's part of a covenant situation. So in the Old Testament, basically, it was the part of their walk to show 
still get salvation. And it was a personal righteousness they had. It had nothing to do with the eternal righteousness. Imputed righteousness. Which is what Romans 4 is talking about. And according to their own writings, they have to meet that. The workman has even said, Oh, Adam, Noah, and Abraham will say by faith, by grace alone, through faith, according to Ephesians 2 9. So, that's the only way anybody can be saved. Are there different issues involved later on in the church age? Because there's a different relationship uh, with the walk? Yes. But God can't be involved in works to save anybody eternally. Just can't do it goes against his attributes. Same thing in tribulation. Oh, they're going to be involved in works because they don't take the mark. They don't take the mark because of God's grace. That's why they can't boast. It was God who opened their eyes to make sure they don't get deceived in taking the mark. So that's what that's arguing. Oh, no, no. See, if they don't take the mark, that's a work. See, they didn't do something. They didn't do something because God showed them. Because if God didn't show them what not to do, they would have taken the mark. Like everyone else. Everyone, because they were deceived. God opened their eyes not to take the mark. And so, God worked by grace for people who were saved in the tribulation, opened their eyes. The Antichrist has this great deception that deceives people in taking the mark, and God says, and if, if the days hadn't been shortened, the, the elect would have been deceived. But because of the elect, the days are shortened. But the fact is, grace comes in and says, no. And they see that. And they say, no, I'm taking it. That's eternal security. So they can't boast. It's going to work. God showed them the truth. They opened their eyes to and said, nope, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking the mark. Who takes the mark? People are deceived. And they want to be deceived. The love of truth is not in them. So not, don't let guy don't let, one don't let people try to try to think back on these people who are believers and say, well, no way you could think that way as a believer and still be saved. How could Paul go into the issue of taking a vow? The man talks for grace. He, but he goes, because he's so desperate to reach the Jews, he's going to, will take a, a vow. If the God tells him not to. It's irrational. And so we argue with these people, and you discuss it. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make, that doesn't, it's not supposed to make sense. It's a heresy. And two, don't, 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 don't let people tell you, well, it doesn't matter that people are teaching something incorrectly. And refusing to repent of it. Because when you we show them the truth and they refuse to repent of it, and they, in particular the teachers, and they dig down and they, they, they just double up and they begin to mock you, with ad hominem attacks, that's what they got, ad hominem attacks, or question your, your uh, um, academic background. Well, who are you? You, you, which you, you just a, uh, you know, you just this, you just that, you know. I went to, a, I went to a theological college. <laughs> so get out of here. That's why you have a King James Bible. You show them the King James Bible. You say, wait a second. That's what the King James Bible says. Oh, I'm a teacher winning souls. How can you tell me what the King James Bible says? John L. Rice is winning souls. He was, he was totally won by the King James Bible issue. So there's a, a crucial issue of understanding the King James Bible is the pure word of God. Don't get, don't get, get involved in a corrupt version. And what John R. Rice's big argument was, I'm a soul winner, so that's what counts. And he rejected simple truths about the King James Bible, for instance. But heresy is always irrational. It's never meant to be rational. The flesh isn't rational. The flesh doesn't make sense. The, fle the flesh is emotional. 
The flesh is selfish. The flesh is greedy. The flesh is childish. And that's why you see these guys who involve these heresies. That's how they act. That's how they act. And when a, when a person gets saved by believing in the true gospel, as you see in Ephesians 1, 12, and 13, and then denies certain things after, later on, says, no, I, I don't believe in eternal security, the guy will say. And you say, well, you couldn't have been saved then. That wasn't a criteria to, for part of salvation. It's a logical corollary. You say, well, because the argument is, well, how can they believe that all the sins were paid for? Well, I can't figure out how they, they don't believe in eternal security either. Gifts and, calls of God, the gifts, gifts and calling of God are without repentance. But someone that's on the line said, well, yeah, you, 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 God, uh, God paid for all your sins on the cross. Jesus Christ paid for all your sins on the cross. But, <laughs> but what? <laughs> but what? But they do. But they do. In order for eternal security to be a criteria for salvation, you have to come in and say, now, wait a minute, before you believe now, you have to understand. you gotta, you got to believe it, that you can't lose your salvation when you believe this. That's what they, they want you to believe. So, okay, now Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, losing him from the dead, you trust him as your personal Savior. And the guy said, yeah, that's right, I believe that. Don't, 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 don't stop before you believe that. <laughs> you got to know you can't lose it. Don't do that. What people do is putting that in there. Say, well, if you believe that, you must have believed in eternal security. No, you weren't thinking about that. You just think you got you have salvation now. What do they have eternal life? They weren't thinking about what eternal life was. They just think eternal life means that they're going to heaven. And then Satan comes in. Well, he ta first thing he attacks is assurance that they really were saved. It's too easy. All you had to do is believe the gospel. It's too simple, right? No works. Come on. That's what Satan comes in with. You got to do something. You gotta repent of your sins. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You have to confess your sins. You have to, you know, you have to call upon the name of the Lord. You gotta do something. So Satan comes right behind these guys. And eternal security says, "Now, nah, come on, you gotta be something. You know, God isn't gonna take every. Do, you can't do every. You can't let you can't let do anything and get away with it and go to heaven." Those are the arguments they make. Satan makes against a, a new believer, and they seem rational. They seem rational at the point at times. They say, "Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense." And you know, and why? Because the flesh. They reject what the scripture says, and the flesh takes over. They say, "Yeah, maybe that gospel was too simple. I, you know, there must be something after. You know, maybe I need to confess my confess Jesus Christ. Maybe I need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Maybe I, I you know, I, I really didn't feel saved. And yeah, you know, you know." God certainly wouldn't let me do this and, and still be saved. Such and such, and they bring up these absurd, absurd thing. So maybe, yeah, there's some sins you, Jesus Christ didn't die for. There's your rationality. But Satan's subtle, people. And so people argue about this, and they argue back and say, well, I'm going to believe that and still be saved. <laughs> because Satan's subtle. That's, that's his most operandi. He deceives. And he brings, the first thing he does, he comes in there and he says, he attacks his, the person's assurance of salvation. That the person really believes he has salvation. Yeah. And he attacks the attempts, you know, that they can't lose it. Those are crucial doctrines because once you have the assurance, once you have believe you can't lose it, then you can move on to other doctrines because you're not, not looking, always looking back and say, Why am I, was I ever really saved? Or if I, what did save, is there something I can do to lose it? But that's to get you into the flesh. But that's what the growth issue is. That's why a Christian, a young, a babe in Christ has to now be put under a, two, a true doctrinal teachings so he doesn't get deceived. So he starts building on the foundation. And what's your argument against the true gospel? It's too easy. It's too simple. No, you just can't believe. We, we have to have his faith. And then what do these guys do? Well, there's a head faith and there's a heart faith. And they bring me walk out. Hey, anything, anything to destroy the simplicity of the gospel is brought in. 
head, the head and heart faith issue was a Calvinistic issue to explain why people in Calvinistic, you know, Presbyterian churches or Calvinistic churches, uh, Calvin said there were people who go in these churches and who you think will say weren't really saved because they had, they, he brought that issue. Well, they weren't part of sovereign grace. They, they weren't really chosen. You know, they weren't part of the sovereign uh, grace issue. Uh, and so they thought they were saved, but they were actually once never saved. So let me stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.